Hello and welcome to Good Clean Gaming. I'm your host, Shalindo, and today we're playing some renowned Explorers International Society. I'm on my second attempt through this game. I've been theory crafting, trying to figure out a great strategy, and I think I've got one. So we're going to try to jump to a new game here, and I'm going to show you what my thoughts are. We're going to do discovery mode. I'm going to complete I'm going to complete the game in discovery mode first. And once I actually beat the game in discovery mode, we're going to do adventure mode uh, if there's still interest, because that one's much more challenging with, you know, resolve and everything being an issue. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of theory crafting. I've clicked on each character and I've taken all their details down, all their perks and skills and statistics and just everything, 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 all the moods that they apply. I've taken all this stuff. I know I'm mousing around a lot, aren't I? Um, taken all this stuff and I've thrown it into a spreadsheet, analyzed it and tried to figure out what my best, uh, possible strategy could be. And what I came, the conclusion I came to for my attempt here is I want to have a party that's balanced between attack and speech so I don't want a friendly devious crew so none of the friendly devious people will be in the in the uh, crew this time around we're gonna have aggressive devious or aggressive friendly and I've decided on aggressive devious um, because devious tends to support aggressive um, whereas friendly uh, tends to support devious uh, when you have them together so I'm thinking that aggressive devious is probably the stronger or the strongest combination we have uh, we're going to pick Harry Walker as our captain here. Uh, Harry Walker, Harry was a street urchin who survived on the streets by pickpocketing. Now he's a cunning leader, uh, cunning and charming leader. So we're going to get plus 100% gold from any treasure hunt tokens we find. He's 21 years old from Great Britain. Harry's a glass cannon scout with very high speech and high attack, but barely no defenses. So he's going to be high attack uh, on both the speech and attack and that, that's kind of the theme of this crew is going to be high attack on uh, high attack and high speech abilities and not a whole lot of defense uh, we're going to try to take them out fast and you know not let them you know overwhelm us by spawning more and more ads and things like that so uh, Harry can focus on uh, to make the next move count a double for powerful combos. He does well in a cr any crew as long as there's someone with high defenses to protect him. He's devious and aggressive, works well with Charles and Bia. He's a rogue. I think his secondary is, oh, I forget, Beguiler. And you see his stats. He's very offensive focused, and he has grit, which allows him to dodge. So he's not completely defenseless. Uh, for our second crew member... Uh, we're going to go with that recommendation uh, for Bia, not for Charles. We're going to get grab Bia. Bia Hecaton. Bia is a grass, glass cannon fighter with amazing attack and good speech with feeble defenses. She fought for Greek independence from a young age. Now she's a terrifying mercenary. 30 years old, Greece. Uh, her quickness allows her to strike an enemy without being noticed, so it does not affect their attitude towards you. Uh, does the best in an aggressive crew and needs someone to protect her. Um, go with devious and aggressive, which we're going to be doing that. So if you look at Bia, she has the same thing going. Very high attack power, mostly high, you know, fairly improved speech power. Not great, but a little improved. And uh, has some grit and some armor. So she's a great uh, tank of the group for physical attacks anyway. And then the last crew member we're going to be, grab we blah, 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 be grabbing here is Earl Shanty, a little, little, little crazy guy here. Earl is the nephew of the renowned explorer's janitor from Kansas. Has a fake membership, but everyone acts like it's real. Good with explosives. He's 35 years old from the U.S. He's a glass cannon. You may be noticing a little bit of a trend here. Glass cannon, glass cannon, glass cannon. They, glass cannon means that basically they're fragile, but they do a lot of damage. Um, he has amazing attack and good speech, but very poor defenses. He has area of effect attacks among the best in the renowned explorers. Earl does well in devious and aggressive teams as long as there's someone to protect him. And recommends a team of aggressive and devious. Not, not the two we got, but somebody else. Um, and we, if you look at his stats, attack power is very high. Speech power isn't terrible. And he's got good speech defense, so he's a good tank for speech stuff. Um... So yeah, now these guys all have low health, 30 spirit, 30 spirit, 35 spirit, so if there's anything I'm worried about in this playthrough, it's going to be um, not knocking the enemy down fast enough and then having them do a lot of damage to us. So let's see how this works. Haven't tried this team yet, so this will be new for me, but it's, it's what my theory says. My theory says this will work. There they are, the intrepid explorers. Except for Earl, he's just kind of a, kind of a, a stumbling, bumbling, 
uh, guy there. What's up with his beard? It looks kind of weird. His beard looks weird. Okay, we've seen a l some of these stories, so if uh, so, any of the main story, I'll kind of just summarize and skip through. Uh, we're going to be doing the Druidic Circle as our first expedition. It's randomly chosen at the beginning of the game. So let's see how this goes. Everyone's a little bit nervous. The first expedition is crucial. Uh, if, he gets, if resolve goes to zero, we lose. We start off with low resolve. Um, we are going to... I'm going to be playing very aggressively on the first two maps because when you when your supplies run out, when you get to zero supplies, you don't lose resolve. You just start taking debuffs. Well, the first level, and to a certain degree the second level, it's easy enough where you can take some chances with the supplies. And so I'm going to be actually running out of supplies and continuing to explore because if I focus on getting as much as I can out of the first two expeditions, the later expeditions will be easier. So that's the that's the strategy we're going to employ. Uh, so that means we're even going to go to stuff like this that looks like there's nothing there. There might be something there. Walking through unexplored countryside often yields small rewards. Earl is collecting some berries when Earl spots an unknown fern. Most people don't pay attention to plants, but the renowned explorers surely appreciate it when someone does. We have one study and one campaign token from that. Good job, Earl. Let's go down this way. The crew walks over some fallen trees in the forest when Harry slips and falls. Harry goes tumbling down before landing bottom first on a rotten trunk, breaking the trunk in two. Ouch! Harry's rear may be in agony, but Earl realizes that the rotten truck actually holds some interesting mold samples. A lucky accident. Too steady. Nice. Going down here to this encounter with the campaign token. Just your luck. A pack of hungry wolves is following you. Only one way out of this. Bia is a fighter, so Bia is also a tactician. So Bia can uh, tactically prepare us for the fight. The, these guys are pretty well balanced. I checked all their perks. They seem to, they seem to fit together fairly well. Uh, the game is going to reward us for being an aggressive player this time. So we're going to go aggressive. They're going aggressive too. Not really worried about, you know, um, maximizing the mood. I just need to avoid going friendly and I should be okay. So what we're going to do is... Checking where everybody is. One thing I noticed in the game is if you click on the enemies, if you read these tooltips, they can actually give you some important information. So the brown wolf is fast and aggressive but relatively weak. Um, that doesn't really give you all that much, but uh, in future episodes, especially with bosses, it'll give you a lot of tips in those tooltips. Uh, I'm going to enrage. I think we're going to go devious first and then start doing attacks after that. So I'm going to go get everybody into position first. Here we go. Checking all the stats to make sure I'm ready to go. All right. So we're going to go Enrage, and then you can click on each of these guys and see how much damage you do to each of them. You notice I can almost get rid of... Ooh, I can get, completely get rid of at least one of these guys. So let's go straight attack here. One hit. Now, um, let's see. If I click on... Yep, each each one's going to be... Uh, the aggressive will, will get rid of each one of these wolves, I think. So I think we're good. Poor wolves. I hate I hate using actual attacks in this game. I like I, I really like the friendly and the speech stuff and all that stuff, but uh, we're gonna have to use aggressive sometimes to actually be able to win this this uh, this expedition. Dominated the opponents. Leave. Threat averted. Those wolves will bother you no more. Stories like these will do well at the renowned explorers. Poor puppies. In the middle of the forest, you find ruins of some sort. What it actually was remains to be uncovered. Uh, the crew starts an investigation, but ha and Harry soon finds some finds some ancient Celtic uh, Celtic writing on a stone. It reads something like, "Welcome to the other world, where we fairies live. We have been chased uh, chased of our homeland. We have been chased off our homeland. I'll go with that by the Celts, and now live in this magical place." The crew was looking at the text with interest when suddenly a small person pops up. Ye, I'm a fairy of old. Get off my land immediately or I'll cast a spell on you. Earl can't believe it. A real fairy. Earl is terrified and excited at the same time. It's just a kid, Earl. 
Earl blushes and acts as though uh, that was known all along. Still, pretty impressive that an orphan kid is able to decipher the script. Harry offers the lonely kid a chance to join as part of your entourage. The girl happily accepts. Yes, I can be your student. Finally, I'm going to see more of the world. So we've gained two study tokens and a student has joined our entourage. We're going to be racking up on those tokens. We're going to get a ton of those things. Now I'm going to just look around, make sure we're going in the direction I want to be going. So we're going to go up this way. Out of the middle of nowhere in the forest, a huge cliff stands before you. Such a geological rarity often holds some exceptional treasures. Harry orders the crew to look around. The crew comes back to make an action plan. Bia mentions that there is plenty to find at the top of, at the foot of the cliff. Maybe a survivalist or athlete would be able to climb the dangerous cliff and look for more specific treasures. Nobody wants to risk climbing the cliff. Look for treasure at the bottom of the cliff. Aw, oh, come on. Oh, I don't have a survivalist, do I? Looking for a treasure here might be dangerous, but after a long search, Bia finally finds a real treasure worth taking home. We have a 40% chance of finding Druid Quartz, 30% on Ammonite Fossil, 20% on Sea Sapphire, and 10% on Sunstone. What do we get? What do we get? What do we get? Sea Sapphire, 50 Renown. Nice. One plus one study whenever you enter a nature challenge for the first time. Outstanding. A fantastic find. You're going to be the envy of the renowned explorers with such a rarity. Such a discovery is sure to be appreciated at the renowned explorers. The crew turns its attention to the big prize of the island, the Druidic Circle. Okay, we're down to two supply. We're going to start taking supply damage. On one of those rainy days, you see a feather lying beneath a small tree. The feather is both magnificent and valuable. Great. Okay, we're now officially out of supplies. Suddenly, Harry orders everyone to stop. This part of the forest looks different. Maybe someone used to live here hundreds of years ago. The crew starts investigating and finds broken Celtic pottery. Some are useful for the investigation. Others will net you some coin. You're out of supplies. You press on, but the situation is having severe effects on your crew members. Oh, they're so sad. Look at the sad faces. A number of things can happen. Earl's, Earl becomes frustrated with the lack of food and loses speech defense. So we're going to start taking debuffs as long as we're doing this. But... It's worth it, I believe. A group of wolves is being very protective and territorial. They're launching an attack on you. Stand your ground. That's what we're going to do right now. Okay. Start encounter. We're going to do... Looks like we're going to get a, a reward for Devious. So we're going to do Devious. If we can. Looks like we got three surrounding us. Yeah, let's go. Let's go with Devious. I want to get that extra token, and it's worth it. These guys are easy anyway. No more one-shotting. Okay, and run Bia over here. Move Harry right there. Enrage. Take that one out. Now Bia is going to do... Let's just do Terrify. We're staying with the Devious because we want that token. Okay, in turn. We're actually going to take some damage. Oh. Miss. See, I love that grit. See that plus, plus the grit right there? If we click on somebody... See, all these guys have pretty good grit. 54%. That means 35% chance of evading an enemy's ability on Harry. So he has a 1 in 3 chance of not getting hit by anything. Awesome. Let's go ahead and finish off the wolves by making fun of them. Sweet. Okay, and last one. Boom. Give me my token. You broke your opponent's minds. We got Devious, uh, plus five grit, plus two speech power. We got three tokens. Love it. The best way to beat such animals is by showing them who's boss. The wolves become intimidated by your presence and flee. The fleeing wolves are followed by crying pups. Oh, they make away safely. 
you're out of supplies, you press on, but the situation's having ill effects. Bia starts feeling feeble, loses armor. Okay. Oh, there's supplies right there. I'll make my way back down to that. Well done, you found a hidden horde on this expedition. On every expedition, there's a hidden horde to be found. On these occasions, fate smiles upon your crew. Your uh, crew finds... If we get treasure hunt, we get a lot of gold. Discovery gets us a lot of research. Secret gives us a lot of fame. We're going to go very fame heavy in this attempt. And I'll try to show you why later. The crew walks through a dense part of the forest where they hear a characteristic chirp coming from above. The crew looks up and sees an elusive gold bird. These babies are worth a ton to tra bird traders. Sadly, the bird seems to have uh, seems to know that it's very desirable and makes it to, to fly away. The crew already feels disappointed at this missed opportunity when someone unpredictable in, someone's unpredictable instinct kicks in. Earl cannot let so much money fly away and does something unpredictable. This crew member's greed makes them do weird things. That bird is worth a small fortune. Earl's greed takes over, and in a blind rush, Earl manages to snatch the little fellow. While Earl allows the crew to research it, Earl wants to keep the profits. Earl's greed can make for unpredictable actions. Earl gains the, gains the quick thinker unpredictable perk. Out of supplies again. Loses grit. Okay, let's level these guys up. Because they are both, re uh, all, both all ready to level. So we've got Rogue Bluffing. we got Beguiler Storytelling. Uh, we're going to make this guy pure Rogue to get him as high as possible on the Rogue level. Um, so Rogue Bluffing is where we're going to go. That also unlocks Piercing Shot, which is going to get stronger. So what it's 75% uh, of our attack ability. And it has a range of about, uh, on a point, and covers about four tiles. It affects enemies with a target line. And cannot be used with standing next to an enemy. But uh, every time, every turn I have with it not used, it increases in power by 25%. Which means if I don't use it for two turns, it'll be 125% power on... All the enemies in the line. So that's actually huge. Huge! So I've got to remember to take advantage of that. Let's go. Oh, got to get the other levels. With Bio, we're going to go with. Uh, he's a tactician. We're going to focus on tactician. Unnoticeable attack is the ability we just unlocked. Gives 100% attack. It's, it has an uncertain attitude, so it doesn't influence the current attitude. And the ability does not increase alcohol. Uh, alcohol. Aggro. Where did that come from? Um, melee cooldown three turns. So that's a neat little extra attack for us. And the last one is Earl. His name is Earl. He's an engineer and a quick thinker. We're gonna throw on the engineer. Automata. Automata. And that's gonna give him experimentation, which is a 50% attack, but it's an AoE ability. Affects enemies within a target circle. And it gains 25% power each turn off cooldown up to 75% power. So max, after three turns being not used, it'll be 125% attack uh, on all enemies in a circle, which should be pretty helpful. Let's move down and get these supplies. Nice! You found a full grove of edible berries, vegetables, and clean water. This allows you to restock some of your supplies. Three supplies, so we're not out of food anymore. The day of exploring was not that exciting, but you did manage to find some rare edible mushrooms. A great party gift. Go down here. Look at all these tokens we're getting. The crew finds an overgrown, overgrown rock formation with some rare herbs growing on it. However, Harry recognizes that useful minerals might be in the rock. Harry is curious to see what's, what more is in there. The crew is now in a dilemma. Bia wants to save the plants for research. Harry is giddy to see what's more in the, uh, what more is in the rock, albeit at the cost of destroying the herbs' habitat. So we can either get three study or check out what's uh, mine the rock to find more. So let's let's mine the rock, see what's in there. It's decided, mining it is. Bia reluctantly agrees, and the crew mines the whole rock, destroying the herb's habitat. After fully mining the rock, the crew finds some interesting and valuable minerals. Not bad, but not great either. Um, we so basically we sacrifice two study tokens for two collect tokens, which actually is okay with me. We were kind of low on uh, collect tokens anyway. We have explored the entire island. Boss time. The Druidic Circle must be somewhere around. Once you get there, this expedition will come to an end. Uh, so we're going to say onwards. The crew vigorously search through the dense forest. It doesn't take long before you find it. A standing stone circle. 
the rune main minier must contain valuable information to study. So we're gonna go, and it's Rivalo. So basically, him and his team got here first. He's taking the stuff. He's gonna have one of his crew delay us while he takes the stuff. And she's gonna not let us pass until we beat her up. So here we go. So this, hopefully, since this is a boss, maybe this will show us uh, a little better uh, how well this strategy is going to work. So first things first, you can click on these guys. Mindless follower, mindless follower, mindless follower. Da, da, da. They're all mindless followers. And then Cassandra is the scientist of Rav Ravalu's crew. She's friendly and tries to win you over with diplomacy, but sometimes leaves herself open to attacks. So that gives you just, I mean, that's an obvious hint. You want to go aggressive against... Sandra here because yeah friendly is weak against aggressive so how are we gonna win this one well we're gonna go aggressive because that beats um, friendly so here we go hey yeah okay, we're gonna go Bia is gonna take out this one Harry, get over here with your bad self. Oh, can you do experimentation from there? You can't. Uh, let's not let's not mess around too much. Let's go over here. We can't actually get close enough to do an attack, so he's just gonna hang out for a bit. We have plus twenty speech defense, so we shouldn't take too much damage from her. Ah. Uh, one thing I am missing from this crew is heals. I don't really have any good heals. Okay, what do you say we take out the ads? So, Bia, go over here. I'm going to do a thorough job of this. Nice. Earl. How about, how about, um, Harry? Take out this guy. Boink. And then Earl. Take out the last one. Yes, attack. Go. Do. Do the thing with the thing. And turn. Hopefully be as safe over there. He's taking a lot of damage already. Fumble, nice. Alright, this is gonna be fun. Hey, why can't he use hold on, what did I miss? Aggressive Oh enemies, he's adjacent to an enemy. We can fix that. Although it won't matter because then he won't have a cone to use. Never mind, I'll just do a regular attack. Bia, how about you take out the thug right here? And Earl, what can you do? What can you do? Yep, regular attack's just gonna be the best thing. Hey. So this is going pretty well, huh? So far? So far so good? Alright, should be able to take her out. Easy peasy. Uh. Ta da Cassandra's livid. Barbarian! How dare you attack us during a civilized conversation? People like you are the reason the gods left us. I hope your bloody wars lead you to ruin. And she leaves you to follow Rivalo, who somehow managed to get away with the whole minier. Whatever. Rivalo is gone with the main minier. The most interesting and telling scriptures were on it. Suddenly a hooded figure appears on the scene. The druid pops out of the forest. Amazing! I saw how you handled that encounter just now. Your strength showed in that fierce battle. I'm honored that someone like you is uh, looking for our history. 
Allow me to help with a divination. Please tell me, what is the dream you chase? To become the most famous explorer. We're going for fame on this run, so we're going for uh, most famous and respected explorer. The druid smiles. Ah, fame, of course. I know a Celtic burial site with Adam's stupid as the world. The druid leads the crew and suddenly stops to tell the crew to start digging. The crew finds popular troubles and a unique treasure. Got three campaign tokens. Got a Celtic leaf for an extra four campaign and four study. Awesome. With that last find, your expedition still concludes on a high note. However, it's clear that you want to be uh, Rivalo. Now it's personal. Back to London. There we go. We're mainly aggressive. Treasures. Celtic leaf. Rack them up. Come on. Not a bad haul. Not a bad haul. I've, I've done better on my first uh, expedition in some of the little practice runs I did. A magnificent job. The board of renowned explorers, yada, yada, yada. You can now carry more supplies. 10 of 10 will be our limit. We also got we got the upgrade badge, renown, and another insight token. Uh, we have four more expeditions to catch up with Rivalo. Okay. So I'm going to take a look at the map, take a look at the tokens, figure out the best course of action. And then in the next episode, we're going to continue into the second expedition. And I hope you join me for that one. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to beat this one. Uh, feel free to click that subscribe button if you're interested in seeing more videos like this. Thank you for watching. And remember, keep it clean.